Well guys, this is it. Here we are, Lego The Lord of the Rings Rivendell, the set review. I'm sure many of you who remembered me saying a long time ago I was going to review this set have been waiting for this day. And if you're new here, well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. Long story short, a long time ago when this set came out, not even a year ago if we're being honest, but still, I said I was going to review this set. Well, I delayed it long enough. It is, I have finally sat down and I have started the, rec the recording process. And I'm sure many of you are very excited that I finally got around to it. But here it is. Set number 10316, Rivendell. The set has 6,167 pieces and costs $49.99 in the US. At time of recording, we also have news of a sequel set, which is going to be Barador. If you want all the information on that, I should have in the upper right corner a link to that video where I give you all the updates on that upcoming set that we've gotten so far. That being said, before we get started everyone, please be sure to leave a like, hit that notification bell, subscribe to the channel, and share this video out here, as I really appreciate your all's support and patience for this particular video. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. And we're of course going to start off with the box itself. It being a currently typical LEGO Icons box, at the bottom here we have more gold coloring for the lego bricks which is a pretty decent color choice especially for a lego lord of the rings set i do think this set would have looked really cool with a rivendell like background instead of the black background but hey you get a pretty nice view of everything included in this set all right so we're going to tip the box over here real quick and at the top here you can see all the different minifigures included in the set which will be we will be getting to in a moment if i recall the set has 21 minifigures 16 of them being actual characters, while another five are actually statues. All in all, that's a pretty large minifigure count, and good thing too, because of the price tag of this set. Taking a quick look at the back of the box here, you can see multiple pictures. We've got up here, we've got some measurements, as well as all the different pieces that come together on this set. Then we've got a couple photos here, just showing off multiple different areas, features, and characters, as well as the back of the building itself. All of these details we'll be getting into in the actual set review. Alright, so when you open the box, you will be greeted with three massive instruction manuals. I brought this one out just to show you all kind of what they look like. The first one showcasing this piece. The second one actually showcases this section right here. And then the third and biggest one will showcase the entire middle section. And opening it up, you get a bit of detail about the history of the set, some of the designer's thoughts, and even the history of LEGO Lord of the Rings itself, a bunch of sets from back in the day. And throughout the set, you'll get some pretty interesting inputs from the LEGO designers, just about little details and stuff they included in the set for and what reason for. You'll also be greeted with a massive white box with a handful other bags. In the end, this set comes to 49 bags in total. That's right, 49, just one shy of 50. I'm not complaining though, it's a lot of LEGO pieces for the set. But that's what you'll find when you open up the box. Alright, so up next we're going to take a look at all the minifigures included in this set. And as a bonus, I broke out some of the older LEGO The Lord of the Rings figures to do a bit of a comparison. So first off, we've got Gandalf the Grey. This is being the newer version. This minifigure does have a hat and hair combo where we see the return of Gandalf's classic wizard hat. And as a bonus here, he comes with a pretty special piece to help him sit down in some of the elven chairs for the Council of Elrond, because this Gandalf minifigure actually reuses the skirt piece, which is a pretty smart idea, the way they go about doing this. Now, there are a whole bunch of stickers in this set. I should have probably brought up the sticker sheet also when I broke open the box. But here we are with both Gandalfs. We have the one from our new set here, and then a Gandalf from a much older set. All in all, the details are very much different as the skirt piece is able to provide us with a lot more wrinkles especially in his robe now the older gandalf i do have a gamring sword with it now the newer gandalf does not have this sword or at least not that i can recall as i would have had him holding it for my display if he would have come with it all in all quite a few differences including different hair pieces which i'm gonna say the new one fits way better 
All right, so the next minifigure we're gonna take a look at is Aragorn. Now, I'm not comparing minifigures due to the fact that this is an entirely new outfit. If he was in his normal Fellowship outfit, I would have brought out the older Aragorn and you could have seen how they had differed. But this being an outfit exclusive to his scenes in Rivendell, there's really nothing to compare him to. That being said, he does come with his sword, Unduriel. We don't have many details in the back, just his belt mostly wrapping around. And of course, we also have his angry expression, or at least a more fierce expression. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the ring bearer himself, Frodo Baggins. He of course comes with the ring and Sting as his accessories and his nice cloak. One of the biggest advantages for these set newer figures, especially the Hobbits, is the fact that we actually have his feet printed. If we take a look at the older Frodo design, the designs are actually extremely similar, of course without the molded feet. And we also have some different expressions, as the older Frodo looks a lot more weary, while the newer Frodo looks quite a bit happier. Like the older Frodo, the newer Frodo does have the kind of crazed look he gets after he gets stabbed by the Nazgul or stung by Shelob, which is as always a very nice addition to the figure. Next up, we're going to take a look at Samwise Gamgee. Now, this minifigure is leagues different from the original, but we'll take a look at that in a second. He has a different color cloak, as well as the dual-moded feet. He also has a much more cheerful expression. Now, comparing the original Sam minifigure with the modern Sam minifigure, there's you can see all the differences immediately. Besides the feet, their torsos are absolutely completely different as well as a different hair color for both as well. The facial expression, though, is as always still very determined to protect Mr. Frodo. We're going to continue on with the Hobbits, next one being Mary Brandybuck. This Mary, once again, being very well detailed. He has a bit of food with him. You know, I think he's broken something, though. Anyway, he has his usual smug expression, as well as the dual-moded feet. And his alternate face is very cheerful. Now, comparing both Marys, first thing to note is, again, the hair color is very different. In fact, the older Mary has basically what the coloration we have for the new Sam. Other than that, though, the, though a bit different, the torsos almost look exactly the same, as well as no dual-moded feet for the older Mary. Cloak's the same color, though, as well. Next up, we have Pippin featuring his lovely scarf, as well as a bit of Lumba's bread and his dual-molded feet. On one side, we have a cheerful expression. On the other side, we have a bit of a frightened Pippin, but, you know, Gandalf's probably yelling at him for something he did again, so... <laughs> now, comparing the Pippins, there is a lot more major differences on the torso design. His scarf is a bit more messy in the older version, while in the newer version, it looks a lot more clean. The cloaks are also different colors too, but the hair coloration is exactly the same. My older Pippins also has a much more ragged cloak. Fun fact, he is actually one of my first ever Lego of the Lord of the Rings minifigures, as the first Lord of the Rings set I got was the Mines of Moria. So yeah, this is a pretty old, worn out Pippin, because at the time of those sets being released, I still majorly played with my minifigures. I still love both Pippins though. The next Fellowship member we're going to be taking a look at is Boromir. First off, this Boromir has a very cheerful expression, and he looks really good with a new shield piece as well as a broadsword, which is a pretty nice design as well, I might add. His alternate expression is a much more sterner one, which makes sense. When you're getting tempted by the ring, you're doing some pretty serious thinking. The newer Boromir is vastly different from the older one. The older one's shield was a completely different piece as well as the sword. And his torso and leg designs are also pretty different, as the newer one has much more bluish legs while the older one has gray with his cloak draping down over it. But the hair color is the same. In fact, the facial expressions are not too different other than the hair color of his beard. Now, when you ask me which Fellowship member changed the most in the newer set, I would definitely have to say Gimli. We'll take a look at why in the second, but... First off, this Gimli has the medium-sized legs, which means he can give the impression that he's walking, unlike the hobbits who have shorter legs. His beard's a different color, he's very well designed, and his helmet is actually a bit more expressive in its gold coloration, which is completely different from the older Gimli, whose helmet was so much more dull. In fact, his beard was a bit more of a dull color, as well as a different design. He also used the shorter legs, which is a big difference between minifigures. And of course, the design is a major difference. As you can see the belt on the newer Gimli, but the older one, his beard completely covers his belt. And that's why I've got to give Gimli 
the title of the most changed minifigure in this set. Last but definitely not least, my favorite Fellowship member, Legolas Greenleaf. He's also pretty different. I just think Gimli's are much more noticeable. But this elf has dual molded boots, as well as his usual design, his longbow, and a new hairpiece that we were introduced to elves in this set. He has some pretty different facial expression, a much more serious one on this side. And then his normal facial expression, a bit more of a smirk. Now, when I bring out my older Legolas, I was a bit... Legolas being my more favorite character, I was a bit creative of him back in the day. I had to give him a dark green cloak and an elven dagger, an extra one I got from the Hobbit sets. So that's why this Legolas is a bit different. In fact, I might just give my green cloak to this newer Legolas because... I think the cloak's a very important detail that I think his minifigure should get if we get another version down the road after Lothlorien. But that being said, his torso and legs are completely different. And of course, we got the older Lord of the Rings elf hairstyle as well. And the older Legolas is a bit more sterner, while this newer one is much happier. A couple more minifigure accessories to quickly go through. We've got two new piece builds to basically give you the impression of the Hobbit sitting. As you can see, I set up Frodo here with these pieces, and it's a really good idea on in my opinion. We've also got a set for Old Bilbo, and it actually wouldn't be too hard to build a set for the other three Hobbits as well. You just have to find the right colors that match their pants, and of course, two tan pieces to go for the feet. I also forgot to mention that another reason Gimli's such a different figure is because he actually has a hairpiece that fits with his beard. That was one of my favorite additions for the minifigures in this set, was the fact that Gimli got a hairpiece. Those are just a couple things that I wanted to quickly throw in there, at least before we moved on to the other figures. So, moving on. The next minifigure we're going to be taking a look at is the older Bilbo Baggins. First off, I love the detail. He just, It's very simple, but it suits him very well. He has his walking stick as well as his nice white hair and his dual molded legs. Let's not forget his second expression, which is a very scary one when he sees the ring again after all those years away from Frodo. I'm sure a lot of people can recall the jump scare that they were given when the film came out. The next minifigure we're going to take a look at is Elrond Half-Elven, Lord of Rivendell. He has his crown printed on his head, which is a nice difference. It gives him an opportunity to reuse that new elf hair piece. And he also features a skirt piece like Gandalf, which once again is the reason why he's given this kind of piece to give the impression that he's sitting. We'll probably take a look at that when we get through the rest of the set. Then of course we have his brand new torso piece that matches all the way down to the bottom of the skirt piece. Should also note the back of the minifigure has a little bit of detailing and looking at the second expression, he has a much more stern one, probably recalling the time the ring could have been destroyed. The next minifigure we have is a dwarf. Now, a lot of people reference him as Gloin. I'm pretty sure Lego said that it's not Gloin, but I, like many other Lego fans, just like in the books, it's Gloin. That's who it is. He has a bit of girth on his belly as he's a much older dwarf, and he's probably been eaten quite well. And like his son Gimli, he has the legs that give you the impression that he's walking, the more medium size instead of the short or longer legs. He's basically an older dwarf that looks very similar to Gimli, Hence, why we call him Gloin. The final named character in this set is Arwen, wearing a beautiful white gown that she wears in the film, as well as the book that she uses to convince her dad to reforge Narsal into Andoriel. The back of the skirt piece actually has a bit of design, and if we flip her hair around, you can see she has a much more stern expression. Oh, and it's also important to note that when you open the book, there is a sticker piece, basically, in... I'm pretty sure it's scribbles, it's not in any actual language, but it's still a nice detail nonetheless. Now we're almost done, we have a couple elves included in the set, which makes sense, it is Rivendell. We have a male and female elf, one with more brown hair and one with blonde hair, with, you know, some kind of Middle Earth detailing. They're both technically there to recreate the scene of the forging of Andoriel, as there's a blacksmith section included in Rivendell, which we will once again get into later. A nice detail is both of them include some pretty fierce expressions on the back of their heads, as well as some really nice detailing, especially on the female elf skirt on the back of the minifigures. Alright, and that about wraps up minifigures in the set, or does it? This set actually comes with a real plethora of statue minifigures, kind of detailing some elves of the past. One of them is an elf holding the Shard of Narsal, which is a brand new piece included in this set. Hold on. Wait, there we go. 
Here's a pretty good view of that piece. Some of these minifigures are basically duplicates, but they are fully fledged minifigures included in this set, so I had to bring them up here. After a bit of a tussle, I have finally managed to position my camera and Rivendell so you can see the whole set within the frame. Now, as we, we're going to review each of the three sections, so hopefully I'll be able to position it a little better and clearer, as there is a lot to look at. And hopefully one day I will actually have the workspace to actually showcase some bigger sets, because, whoo, that, this was fun. Lots of fun. But anyway... Let's get one thing straight. I am not complaining about the size of this set. I love the size of this set. That being said, with the current workspace I have for my channel, hopefully one day I'll be able to have a bigger space and more area to showcase these larger sets. That being said, taking a look at the entirety of this set now, We've got, the t we've got the tower to the Council of Elrond that moves on down to finally end at the blacksmith shop. And we're going to be taking a look at each section individually. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick shot of the whole thing put together. So starting off with the leftmost part of the build, that being the tower side, this is the first and smallest section you'll build in the set. That being said, it's no less important. The tower is very well designed, very symmetrical all the way around. And of course, as mentioned before, it features all the elven statues that are included in the set, except for one. And taking a look at the rest of the left side, we've got some steps stepping into what I essentially think is a little library. And then above that, we have Bilbo's room, or essentially the room where Frodo wakes up after being stabbed by the Nazgul. If we quickly take a look at the front of the set, another little detail is a little hidey hole for Sam. It's essentially a little place where he's hiding when he's listening to the Council of Elrond. He can run out and immediately join Mr. Frodo on his quest, which is a really nice addition. Another section to quickly note before we get into the interior is the roof. Now, the roof is really unique. It's really beautiful. You know, we got blue translating to tan, nougat, and green. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a tactic that they give you to help you straighten out the little tile pieces. And it's re it really works, in my opinion. Essentially, what you do is you take a plate and you slide it between all the tile pieces and it will straighten them out. And the end result is a very beautiful roof design. Now the back of the tower doesn't really have much except for some detailing and more importantly, a sticker featuring the scene where Isildur cut the ring from Sauron's hand. And as a bonus, this sticker is probably teasing two minifigures we might get in the upcoming Barador set. As Sauron and Isildur, I think, should definitely be included. But it is without a doubt one of the most impressive stickers included in this set. Moving on to Bilbo's room, we've got a couple candles as well as an elven bed with some stickers depicting some pretty nice sheets. As well as in the chest here, we actually have a sticker representing the mithril coat that Bilbo will end up giving the Frodo. And the last thing to note inside is a chair and table with on the table being written, there and back again, a hobbit's tale by Bilbo Baggins. The final section to take a look at here is the little library because as we can see aligned on the wall here, we have a whole bunch of books as well as a nice elven chair. For visitors to sit at and read. The last thing I want to note is the two blue clips right here on the bottom of the set. That's the pieces you will actually use to connect this to the rest of the set. Moving on to the main build of the set here, as we're moving left to right, this is actually the third biggest and final build of the set. But we have the basically the Council of Elrond chambers, as we have the nice little outdoors where everyone's sitting and discussing what to do with the ring, and I just noticed Gloin fell over. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a look at each different section of the set here, but first, once again, the roof continues on from the tower section. Once again, looking as amazing as ever. I also want to bring up the trees. We've got a nice autumn-styled tree smack dab in the middle of this set. And then if I tilt the camera up here a little bit, we'll actually get a nice shot of the other tree. A nice, I think it's like a spruce tree or something like that as well as the top of the tower up there. Moving on to the Council of Elrond itself, we have this nice little platform here with multiple chairs, as well as a pedestal to set the ring on. And I've also got Elrond and Gandalf with their um, sitting skirt pieces, basically, just so you can see how it works. Like you, as you can see, Elrond is sitting completely normally and perfectly right there on his chair, which is pretty well designed. We're using hot dog and ice cream pieces to, for most of the chairs, which is a pretty cool idea. It's really funny at least. Another feature that's really cool is you can actually lift the section of the set off 
to reveal the Eye of Sauron, or a pretty decent interpretation of it underneath. Basically showcasing some of the jump scares we get whenever the Eye of Sauron appears when other people touch it, especially when Gandalf tries to touch it. The nice thing is this it actually sits right back on and Gloin fell off again. He really doesn't want to say his seat, nor does Gandalf. Gandalf doesn't sit as well because of his cloak. <laughs> but the set actually continues because we actually have a bridge that crosses over a little ravine over to this little, um, I'm blanking out what it's called, a little section, was it? Gazebo? Is that what it's called? Something like that. So let's take a look at this gazebo real quick. So if we turn, we've got actually Merry and Pippin chilling here, finding some food, in particular, Lamba's bread which of course Pippin was holding in his hand actually earlier, which he still has one. And as we're gonna continue turning the set here, we get our first real look at the interior and another little spruce tree that's actually growing right next to the big one, which is a pretty nice little detail. But turning and taking a look at the back of the model here, we've got the room where the shards of Narsal are being kept. And that's where our last statue comes into play, as well as a couple paintings. One of them, I think, depicts um, Elrond's father and his ship, and the other one, I think it was the city of Gondolin. Some people have told me it's not, so I'm not 100% sure which city it is. I still personally think it's possibly Gondolin. The last section of the set here is, of course, the bottom floor, which features a lot of tiled pieces, which all connect together to create a really amazing floor. As well as we've got some tables, chairs. One of the tables has the map piece, which I used in my recent prediction video, The Future of Lego The Lord of the Rings. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. But anyway, I use that map to predict some of the potential future Lord of the Rings sets. And if we turn the set one more time, you can see where it connects to the tower we just take a, took a look at down here at the bottom. And then another elven painting, this one depicting the forging of the Three Rings of Power. So once again, a really nice sticker. I really love the detailing in this set. One of the things I also want to call out is all this like decoration, this ornate decorations that we see. It looks really beautiful. Just a lot of really amazing detail in this set. Moving on to the third and final section, this being the second piece you build and basically the medium sized piece of the set. We have essentially a blacksmith shop, another gazebo, this one for Aragorn and Arwen where they're chilling, as well as a bridge crossing over a waterfall, which is pretty cool, as there are a lot of waterfalls in Rivendell. All right, so starting off on this side here, you can see once again a couple clips down at the bottom. Those connect to the other side of the larger piece, which results in the complete model you saw earlier. Then anyway, we have some streams of water crashing down, as well as some... Basically, it starts turning white, kind of like you see at the bottom of every waterfall. And then the river just continues to flow until the bridge Aragorn is walking over crosses under it. Crosses, well, it crosses over it. The water crosses under it. As a bonus, I do want to note now all the amazing landscaping details throughout this set, as Rivendell is basically built into a mountain, a very beautiful mountain too, as we got so many great plant elements, including a more newer fern piece, especially at the time of the set's release. And then continuing on with some of the more decorative detailing, we actually got some mushrooms scattered throughout, as well as two really nicely designed trees. Essentially, I think these trees would grow to become um, essentially the massive tree we saw growing in the middle of the Council of Elrond section. Nonetheless, a really nice use of green and gold and orange. Yeah, and yellow. Let's not forget yellow. But all right, if I continue spinning it real quick, we can actually see a sword being forged by one of the elven blacksmiths here. There we go. I just lowered the camera, so make it a bit easier. But there we go. So we got this guy forging, and behind him we have a fire going, because, you know, you can't be a blacksmith without a good fire. And then we actually have an interior to the shop that we'll take a look at in a second, where we have the other elf exiting right now from probably a hard day's work. One of the details I do want to know is it's really cool having all these tree roots coming out of the ground here, basically, because the tree isn't fully into the mountain. And we also have some more hanging mushrooms, essentially. At least they're typically mushrooms. They're part of the fungi family. I don't know what they're called. But I think that's been a really cool addition to the set as well. We're gonna take a quick look at Arwen's gazebo here. We have once again another one of those elven couches here, as well as some really beautiful detailing on the top here. And we have Arwen up there reading her book, trying to convince her father to reforge the sword. Then all I have to do is tilt the camera down slightly, and then I can actually remove the gazebo section right here and just put it a little bit off to the side. Then I can tilt up the set and give you a pretty decent look at some of the interior. Inside, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> Let's see here. 
So inside we have a whole a rack of elvish swords essentially here, as well as a table where with sting on it actually, or at least a, n the extra sting piece included in this set. Essentially a little storehouse as we have some more weapons sitting on this side, only they're not elvish swords, one's a bow and one's a broadsword, and then another axe. So all in all, really not much included in here, other than a bit of a blacksmith tool and a lot of hanging weapons. Last thing I want to note on this piece is behind the waterfall is actually a little hidey hole with mushrooms. So a nice little hideout for the hobbits, which is nice. If you ever get this set for a younger person, they can play and have some adventures with their hobbits. And there's a little frog in there too. I'm just re-realizing that. Moving on to our review chart, we're going to start with build time. Now, of course, I delayed reviewing this set for a long time now, and I completely forgot to keep total track, but I do remember this set did take me over four hours to build. So while I can't give you the exact time I took to build this set, I know for a fact it took me over four hours, which is a pretty decent build time, especially for $500. Visually, the set is gorgeous. The roof, the trees, the tower, all the natural elements combined with all these more medieval style elvish like builds. Really the set is one of the most gorgeous Lego sets of the year and of all time if I'm being honest. There are plenty of great looking Lego sets but this one will definitely catch anyone's eye. So visually I'm going to have to give this set a 10 out of 10. Stability wise, now this is a more adult oriented Lego set. So it has a lot more complicated builds, especially its gazebos. If you look at some of the gazebos I have on right now here, they're all on these little thin struts and all it would take is someone to accidentally drop something or you know, you're just trying to move your figures around and stuff and you'll bump into one of them. And it could potentially start to fall over because you've miscellaneous some of the structure. That combined with a whole bunch of the mushroom and plant pieces not being very connected to anything besides one stud, there's a lot of pieces that could fall apart. This is much more of a display set that has a lot of features of a play set. Essentially, this set is a display set that also has the ability to be a play set. Not that LEGO expects you to use it often as a play set. But there is a lot of potential for kids play, but at the same time, it uses a lot more techniques that adults would rather be using in their sets and for, you know, sitting this set out for all, all their fellow Lord of the Rings friends to marvel at, essentially. But all that being said, I'm going to have to give Stabability a 6 out of 10 just due to the fact that there are a lot of loose pieces, whether it be plants or structure pieces that could come apart easily if you're not careful. I do want to add though, I do not have any problem moving this set around as the bases of the sets are actually really sturdy. It's everything on top that has the potential to fall apart. You can actually move each section with complete ease. Design wise, oh the set is great. So many different cool designs, whether it's the Elven Gazebo, all these different natural builds combined with these more castle-like builds like I've brought up before. I can go on and on on how impressive the roof looks or how there's just so many cool decor elven decorations to even the Council of Elrond chairs which uses food pieces. I'm going to have to give design a 10 out of 10 as that's just, you know, I have no complaints about the, any designs in this set. Now price per piece, now price per piece, this is a $500 Lego set that has 6,167 pieces. Now that is a very decent piece to price ratio as you get more than 6,000 pieces for $500. Whenever I think of something in the price per piece ratio, I definitely think a thousand pieces for a hundred is a pretty decent piece to price ratio. Pretty rounded, and you may disagree with me, but whenever I think in terms of piece to price, the set definitely gets a 10 out of 10, as you get easily over a thousand more pieces for 500. Moving on to price per what you get. This is where we judge sets based off what you get in the set, not how many pieces, just everything included, and if I think it's worth 500 And I've got to say, this set is worth $500. It is a hefty price tag and not everyone can afford it. But for anyone who can, I definitely think you will walk away feeling like you got your money's worth. You get the entire Fellowship of the Ring, a massive build, and once again, still over 6,000 pieces. 
and numerous other exclusive characters and designs. It's just an absolutely amazing set, 10 out of 10. Moving us on to the final verdict, which is going to end up being a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this set, and I know I gave Sabe Ability a pretty low rating, but that's only due to the fact that if you're using this other than a display set, which me as a major Lego collector and Lord of the Rings fan, I will definitely be displaying this more than playing with it. Although, the kid in me will probably be playing with this on more than one occasion. It's an absolutely amazing set, worth the money, probably the best $500 price set we've gotten in the recent years. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. It's an absolutely incredible set, and I definitely recommend this one. All right, everyone, I've just been here taking a look at this gorgeous set, and I absolutely love it. And I certainly hope many other LEGO Lord of the Rings fans are loving this set as well. Do you have this set, or are you planning on getting it? Let me know down in the comments section. Now, I know this video was a long time in the making. I said we were going to review it a long time ago, and I was admittedly pretty intimidated by reviewing a set this massive. First off, the table space, which I mentioned earlier. Second, there's just, it was going to be a long video with a lot of time to edit, record, but I really did have a blast while doing it, so I am going to definitely try to do better at getting reviews out when I promise them. And on that note, everyone, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell, and sharing this video out, especially if you're a LEGO The Lord of the Rings fan. And until they release the next set, there's plenty more to come on the channel from multiple other themes, especially Jurassic World, as I'm a huge dinosaur fan as well. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.